Hey viewers, my name is Kara. I'm your host for Tuesdays here on The Pagan Perspective. I am outside next to some bushes in a little, like, little brick alcove type place garden uh, in the city. This is probably not going to be a very long video because this is my first time walking out by myself during the day, vlogging in public in this area. And I know I've been doing it for years, but it still makes me kind of nervous because this is a new area and I don't have as many like little places where I know that I can go and be out of the way and like not be seen. Like I didn't want to go to one of the big public parks. So I'm here because this is a cool little like just little place that I walk to sometimes. But yeah. I thought it would be perfect for today because this week we're doing a topic from our very own Yucca, so this is a team member topic, and the question is what does or what do the cycles of nature mean to us? And I love Yucca's questions that are like so simple, so simply worded, and in that it means that there's so much more that we can say about them. There's so many more directions that we can go. Because me, usually being very long-winded, I would go on this whole, you know, I would write a whole paragraph with examples of like, this is exactly what I mean. Not yucca. Yucca's just like, what do the cycles of nature mean to you? And the cycles of nature in quotes. So yeah, like what does that mean? What do we think that refers to? And then what does that mean to us and our practice? Oh, I just noticed I'm sitting next to like some, some anthills. So I hope I'm not squashing them. They're all around me, but I don't think I'm on one. So I think they're safe. So anyway, yeah, like perfect example, kind of. Let me... I can't turn the camera while I'm recording, but I don't know if you can see them. But anyway, kind of a good example, right? Cycles of nature. So what does that mean to me? On my walk here, I was trying to think, like, when someone says the cycles of nature, what do I think of? So the first thing I think of is the seasons, which is essentially the solar year, right? Because the seasons, if you live in a place that has, that exhibits all four seasons, or <laughs> some places have more than four seasons, you know, or the monsoon season and the uh, muddy season and all these other seasons. Monsoon season is kind of muddy season, isn't it? You get the idea. Um, but if you live in a place that exhibits the seasons and the change in weather that we call seasons, here, um, where I've always lived in the northeastern, you know, like the Midwest United States, northeast of Ohio, we have spring, summer, autumn, winter. And so that's the first thing I think of when someone says the cycles of nature. I think of the seasons, and those are based on the cycle of the sun throughout the year and the positions of the sun. But as far as my pagan path and practice goes, I also follow the lunar cycle, which does the same, you know, we call it waxing and waning when we're talking about the moon, but the sun does the same thing, right? The amount of light that we receive to different parts of the world increases and then decreases. It waxes and wanes throughout the year, and that's what gives us the seasons. We think of it more in the lunar cycle because it happens much quicker. It happens every month thereabout. So we refer to the waxing and the waning of the lunar cycle and the amount of illumination, the amount of the moon that's visible. And then another thing, so beyond that, we think of maybe if you're into astronomy and astrology, you think about the cycles of the planets and the movement of the planets and the sun and the moon through the zodiac houses up in the sky, right? And uh, so the movement of the stars and the patterns, those are natural cycles as well. 
And so when we think of nature, we're mostly thinking of Earth. This is where we live. Um, so I first think of the seasons as we experience them on Earth, which is different depending on where you live. And when they happen is different depending on where you live, but also how you experience the seasons, whether or not you experience them at all. You know, some places don't experience snow, which we get here where I live every year. Um, so we think of the seasons of how we uh, experience them on Earth and where we live and when they happen. But then thinking of the sun and the moon cycles in a pagan practice like mine, not everyone follows both or either of those really not everyone is a nature-based pagan um and then beyond that expanding that out to the rest of our solar system that those are all natural cycles to me so what and then of course um like human nature so like human beings have natural cycles as well and they're all things that we can relate to the cycle of the sun and the cycle of the moon. So there are parallels between them, right? So we could think of the menstrual cycle or we can think of just, um, and what else? The sleep cycle, the cycle that our body goes through as we fall asleep and come back out of sleep and experiencing the REM portion of sleep and coming back out of that. So there's all different kinds of cycles that are natural to us. And for me, what all of that means to my path and my practice, I was thinking about that on my walk. And the main thing I think is connection. That for me, it's about a goal of trying to connect more with those cycles and my place in them and feeling and experiencing them fully. And that I feel really off and I feel really disconnected when... I feel like I am not in tune with those cycles because I've been focusing too much on other things. I haven't made time to go outside or I haven't, you know, I, I haven't sat down and tuned in with myself to find out what's going on with me and my personal cycles and my personal, personal waxing and waning of energy levels, all of these kinds of things. And so the main thing that I kept coming back to when I thought about what do these cycles mean to me is connection, um, that it's it's a goal of mine in my practice to develop connections with these cycles and with nature around me, with my own human nature, my own cycles, things like this, um, to develop those connections and to maintain them. And it's not something that I am always on it 100%. 100% of the time you know like I said there's waxing and waning so there are times where I feel really disconnected and for me it's like yesterday yesterday I had a day where I just like no matter what I did I was like I feel like I don't really exist right now I feel like I'm not here I feel like I'm floating off into space like my head is just floating like lightheaded and so I was like, I need to eat, I need to ground, I need to root myself in my physical body, but also like I need to go out for a walk, I need to connect with the place that I'm in, and just like what's going on right now in the moment. Um, so as I'm always talking about with balance, like balance does not mean being in perfect stasis all of the time. It's like when you're on a seesaw or a teeter-totter or whatever you might call it, that thing on the playground that goes up and down and your friend sits on one side and you sit on the other. Um, or when you're balancing something on your finger, that it doesn't just stay still the whole time, right? It wavers a little bit and you have to move with it to connect with it, to, to maintain your connection with it. Um, so it's about connecting maintaining that but it's also about going with the flow and kind of following it where it goes so when it does lean a little bit more one way you kind of follow that like okay we're going this way now and then you come back like all right now I've integrated that into where I am hello bee there's a big old buzzy bumblebee I don't know if you could hear it uh, over the traffic and general noises but it was pretty loud in my ear and um yeah, and then sometimes you lean another way and you move with that and just realizing that, like, if you don't, if you don't move with it, you're going to drop it, right? Like, 
learning to juggle something or I can't juggle but like learning to balance something balancing something on the tip of your finger or whatever it is um, learning that if you don't flow with it wherever it goes you're gonna drop it you're gonna lose that connection or um, there's a game that we play in the theater I don't even remember what we called it but it's using sticks or dowel rods so some people just call it sticks um, but you can do it with like pencils but it's easier when it's a little further apart where you take a stick let me put put my phone between my knees here to hold it I didn't bring a tripod or anything um, where you get like a stick I'll demonstrate it with this little twig but it would be a bigger stick that would actually be you know it wouldn't it wouldn't do that and you would you and a friend would put your fingers on it like this right and so in order to do this I have to put a certain amount of pressure on each side and if I let go or loosen that pressure it falls and so the game is to keep that like this but you keep moving with your friend and you move around the room and you do different things with it and if you don't move with each other like if your one friend moves too fast and they don't wait for you you drop it so it's that basic kind of idea that we have to move with the flow we have to go with the flow um, tapping in and tuning into these cycles and flow of nature and going from there there's a bunch of people walking their dogs and jogging and walking and all kinds of activity going on here but yeah so like right now it's spring here in Ohio and so what goes on in spring in nature baby birds are hatching I'm seeing a lot of like baby bird shells all over the ground when we go for our walks so things are being born things are hatching things are growing right the flowers are growing and so we think about what that means for us right now in our lives what kinds of things am I giving birth to symbolically right now and you know in what ways am I birthing new aspects of myself every year and maybe every month with the moon cycle you know and um in what ways am I growing and coming out of my shell and coming up out of the ground after that hibernating time of winter and turning my face to the sun and enjoying that, which I've needed that a lot. But it's thinking about what's going on around us right now and how does that mirror what's going on in our own lives or what we could focus on in our own lives at the time to tap into that energy and make use of the just abundant growing energy that's all around me right now because it's spring how do I tap into that and work on things that I want to grow in my own life you know and then when it's summer there might be different things that we connect with and tap into and use in our practice and when it's autumn it's different things it's diminishing it's quieting it's coming back to center and then of course, if you celebrate the holidays of the Wheel of the Year, there are specific goalposts and milestones throughout that where we have time that we honor certain things. Um, but even if you don't, just talking about the general seasons and, you know, in winter, how do we then kind of hibernate? Yeah, like how do we bury ourselves in the ground to get through a cold, harsh time and how do we care for ourselves and nurture for ourselves in that time to ensure that when the spring comes back around, we're able to bust back out of that frozen ground and grow big and beautiful again every year and do it over and over and over. And yeah, it's for me, it's really important to remember that like I don't have to be at 100%, 100% of the time. Nothing in the world is. Everything waxes and wanes. Everything goes through natural cycles like that so it can be a really a really potent remembrance for me as well that like it's okay to have an off day or an off week or whatever you're just going through a cycle and you know that it's going to come back around no matter what it is we cannot stop the turning of the wheel something I love to say to myself just to remind myself so yeah that's my video for this week I will see you guys next week. Let me know 
what you think of when someone says the cycles of nature to you. What do you think of? Let me know in the comments. What do the cycles of nature, whatever that means to you, what do they mean to you in your path and your practice? And what other types of cycles might you honor or acknowledge or pay attention to in your path and in your practice? Let me know in the comments. Watch everybody else's videos this week and we'll see you next time. Don't forget to be awesome, blessed be, and goodbye.